Hey everyone, I'm Shannon Gonter, I'm a professional counselor here in Louisville, Kentucky, and this is our Ask Anything series. These are questions that have been submitted by you and they're getting answered by licensed mental health and wellness professionals in Kentucky. And today we're here with Carrie Hunter. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist. She's part of a small group practice in New Albany, Indiana. Carrie has been providing mental health services to teens and adults for nearly 25 years. She treats clients in person and via telehealth online options. Carrie has been active with Kentuckiana LGBTQ plus communities for many years. She does advocacy, education, and provides di direct mental health care. If you want to learn more about her and her services, you can check it out um, with Nova Counseling Altern Alternatives in New Albany, and their number is 812 206 Three two nine one. So, Carrie, our question for you today is: I'm an LGBTQ plus person, and I do not trust therapy. I feel like they just want me to fit in and try to change me when I'm in there. So, why should I even go to therapy? Yeah, and those are all very important points. Uh, lots of people don't trust therapy, so <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not just LGBTQ plus people. Um, but why should you not go? In fact, you deserve to go if you're dealing with things that people deal with, anxiety or panic or results of something traumatic having happened to you. Yeah, why should you not go? Mm -hmm. Right. And why should you not get appropriate treatment? In fact, many LGBTQ people have not gone when they deserve to get accurate and important treatment for what's happening in their lives. Why would you not go to the cardiologist? Why would you... Right. Yeah. So that's something important to consider. But a part of that is how will you find someone who you can feel comfortable with? Sure. And that also is true for anyone who might be going to see a therapist. Yeah. yeah. So it would be important. Well, in fact, let me back up. People often ask me, um, I only want to see a gay therapist. I don't want to see a straight person. Mm. And, and I think that that can be common in many people who are in minority communities, marginalized communities. Mm -hmm. People of color want to see a person of color. Yeah. Although it's kind of interesting. I don't have kids, and I can work well with people who do have kids. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher, and I don't have kids, and I could be a good teacher. Yeah. So it's important to really consider the person's training and experience. There are many heterosexual people who can do a good job with LGBTQ people. Yeah. yeah. So some of it is if you do decide to go to therapy, do a little research, ask around, talk to your friends, look people up online, psychology today or other things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, very much so. And you, if you're dealing with anxiety, anybody would want to see a therapist who has experience dealing with anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it can be trying to find a good fitting therapist based off more so like the symptoms um, in a sense right. or whatever your goals are for treatment. What would be right. your suggestions for someone if maybe they've been to therapy as a child or adolescent and they maybe did not have a not so hot experience? And so maybe that's why when they're trying to choose to go as an adult, they're feeling like you're just trying to change yeah. me. You're just trying to make me fit in. How do, mm -hmm. how do they navigate that? Yeah. Well, it's sort of a chance to have a do-over. Mm -hmm. um, people in my generation, you know, I'm 61, and the people in my generation were very, very wary about all kinds of social services and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so if, if an LGBTQ plus person is going to therapy, they're not going to therapy because they're gay or they're lesbian or they're bi or, or non-binary. They're going because they're anxious or panicky or depressed and you're not depressed because you're gay. If you're gay, you might be depressed because things happen to you. Or you might be depressed because of what culture is doing. Yeah. But it's being gay or being anxious or depressed isn't specifically due to being LGBTQ. Um, yeah. And you said something before, and I had another thought, but we'll come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just part of part of their identity. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Oh, I know what you were saying. So if somebody had uh, a poor experience mm. when they were a teen, yeah, that happens a lot with my clients. And when I'm doing my initial get to know you conversation, people say, oh, yeah, I went one time when I was 14 and mm -hmm. I just lied to the therapist. And I sometimes think if I had kept track of how many people their parents made them go, and not just LGBTQ plus people, but their parents made them go or their parents got divorced and somebody thought it'd be a good idea 
that they went when they were 10 Mm -hmm. and because of their age, but also because someone else made somebody else's idea that they needed to change. They didn't take advantage of or connect with their therapist. So on the one hand, it's a chance to have a do over. Now you're an adult and you can choose to go Mm -hmm. and you're totally in charge of whether you decide to go to therapy or not. Yeah. Yeah. And the full autonomy to to choose your provider as well, like you mentioned in the beginning. Right. And if you don't feel comfortable with your provider, and I could understand myself that it would be a little hard to have a conversation with my mental health care provider because they're supposed to be the people who know what they're doing. It would be hard to have a conversation like, yeah, I don't think this is a good fit. Mm-hmm. But so you don't have to have the conversation. You just stop seeing that therapist and you see a new one. You don't necessarily have to say that to your dentist. Yeah, I don't like you. You just get a different dentist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh, well, mm-hmm. I love that. That's very helpful. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with this individual who had the question? Um, any kind of last tidbits of information or anything like that? Well, one thing I want to say that has been in my experience working with people who had bad experiences previously with therapists, um, that many people have told me that six or seven seven sessions in, they get the feeling that their therapist is thinking, oh, well, if we just treat your child sexual abuse, you won't be gay. Mm. And so kind of going back to where I started, people deserve to have appropriate treatment for traumatic things that happen to them. And I don't think anyone can know what is going to be the result of appropriate treatment for trauma. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I would say, go and give it a try anyway, because if you're having flashbacks or you can't go to meetings because you get triggered up. You deserve treatment for that. Yeah. And it's not the goal of therapy to change you, but people do change. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is kind of maybe the plan or the goal of therapy <laughs> to change clients, but change them in the way that's helpful for them to live their lives comfortably. Yeah. Very much on their terms, opposed to our agenda yeah. is not so much in the room opposed to theirs. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time. Um, Guys, remember, she's a part of a small private practice in New Albany, Indiana. You can reach out to her. Her number is 812-206-3291. And if you guys have questions that you guys want answered by mental health and wellness professionals, DM us. We'll get them answered for you. But until next time, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.